If you were to travel back 28 million years, you would arrive at a time known as the Oligocene. But this may not be an Earth you recognize. For one, India has yet to have collided with the rest of Asia, the climate was the coolest it had been in 30 million years, and on land were mammals quite unlike anything seen today. And in this video, we're going to highlight just five of these bizarre creatures. And where else to start than with an animal that belongs to a group with the affectionate nickname of of hell pigs, Deodon. Now, despite what their nickname might suggest, Entelodontidae, the family Deodon belongs to, aren't actually related to pigs at all. In fact, modern consensus now places them as a sister group to modern day hippos. Despite the latter half of the name now being outdated, they certainly live up to the hell portion, as Deodon especially was one of the larger animals of its ecosystem, and is the second largest member of the family, only being outdone by the slightly larger Paraentelodon. Like most of its relatives, it probably evolved in Asia before migrating into North America across Beringia. This is supported by fossil distribution, as the oldest fossils of Deodon are found in the more northern states of Wyoming and Nebraska, whereas the younger fossils are found further south in Florida, showing a north to south distribution. Once here in America, it would have established itself as a force to be reckoned with, as weighing over 1500 pounds and having a skull that was over 30 inches long, it was definitely a sight to behold. Its huge skull in particular shows several adaptations that indicate this animal had a particularly strong bite. Research showed that the jaws could potentially have a wide gait and that they had a particularly strong closing motion. Couple this with the fact that the animal's premolars appeared to have played an important function in food processing, this led researchers to suggest that the animal's powerful bite may have been an adaptation for crushing bones, allowing them to feed in a manner similar to today's hyenas. However, micro wear on the enamel of these teeth showed that bone marrow wasn't all that was in its diet. Wear patterns on the teeth of other entelodont species were similar to those seen in wild boars, which have a more diverse diet when compared to other animals and are considered to be both omnivorous and opportunistic. This led to the idea that Deodon and its relative may have been similar, and along with crushing bones, the teeth would have played a role in processing hard fruits and nuts. So, whilst not directly related to them, I guess we could technically call them hell pigs after all. Even with this ferocious bite and its size, I'd have to say our next animal wouldn't have to worry about Deodon. Not only because it lived on an entirely different continent, but because it was way bigger than Deodon. In fact, it may have been the largest terrestrial mammal ever to exist. This is Paraceratherium. Whilst attaining sizes only matched by certain elephant species, it was in fact more closely related to the rhino, but with it standing over 15 feet tall and weighing upwards of 40,000 pounds, you could be forgiven for not thinking this. Interestingly, this size may be the upper limit for terrestrial mammals. This is not because of anything biomechanical, such as bone structure, but is in fact due to the animal's reproduction. You see, most large mammals have long gestation periods, so being this large, would mean that Paraceratherium mothers would have to hold their offspring within for possibly well over two years, which uses up a lot of energy that is needed to support larger sizes. Even with this, I'd still say this animal is doing alright in the height department, but this comes with its challenges. Firstly, you obviously have to eat a lot of food, and its diet of choice consisted mainly on tree leaves. So, with a requirement to have lots of trees to feed on, it has been suggested that this animal would have inhabited forested areas areas, where it would have browsed on the tops of trees. This was helped by the presence of either a short prehensile trunk or upper lip, which the animal is thought to have possessed based on the skull having a very deep nasal notch. Despite this need for food being somewhat problematic, it does help being bigger as an animal. The larger size of Paraceratherium would have allowed it to resist attack from predators, feed on the aforementioned tree leaves that are usually out of reach of other herbivores, and also help it reduce heat loss in the cooler Oligocene climate. This last point though isn't all great, as overheating would still be a problem for this animal. 
So it has been suggested that Paraceratherium would have employed similar strategies that modern large herbivores, like rhinos and elephants, use to stay cool. These include moving around at night when the temperature is much colder, and also inhabiting areas that possess water holes that would have allowed the animal to wallow if necessary. So even though adult Paraceratherium would have been much too large for most carnivores, their young would have made prime targets for predators of the time, and one in particular that it may have had to watch out for was Mongolestes. This small carnivore was the last surviving member of a group known as the Mesonychids, a group of canine-like mammals with hooves whose taxonomic history is a bit of a mess. Depending on the study, this group is either a close relative of whales, a sister group to all artiodactyls, or are basal to all ungulates. But we're talking about Mongolestes here, so let's get back to them. Known from partial jaw fragments found in Mongolia, this animal is different from all other genera within the group, as it possesses an unusually steep mandibular symphysis, which is the point at the front of the lower jaw. Along with this, the lower teeth of this animal are particularly large as well, which has led to the theory that these animals were adapted for a crushing bite. This was further supported by excessive wear found on its teeth, that is thought to have been caused by the constant grinding of bones, meaning the animal possibly employed a sort of pestle and mortar like feeding motion. Other adaptations to this style of feeding include a large space between the M1 and M2 molars for the bones to sit, and large protoconids that would prevent the slipping of bones. Certainly not an animal you'd want to get bitten by. Now, despite all these examples being on the land, bizarre mammals aren't exclusive to here. In fact, inhabiting the waters around what is now modern day Japan would be a hippo like mammal with some very strange features. Known as Ash Roa, this animal belonged to the order known as Desmostylia, which are the only extinct group of aquatic mammals ever. Whilst their aquatic or semi-aquatic nature is definitely unique, their defining feature is instead their strange tooth morphology. The group's molars and premolars are comprised of densely packed columns of enamel that give this group its name, as Desmostylia translates to bundle of columns. How these animals used their teeth was a mystery, until the discovery and naming of a much more derived Desmostylian called yeah, no chance. The researchers who named the species analysed the tooth and palate morphology of the animal, and came to the conclusion that it would have employed a type of suction feeding, holding vegetation in its teeth before sucking in the plant matter. It should be pointed out, however, that this was in a much more derived member of the order, and thus cannot be said with certainty to be how Ashuroa fed, as it was one of the oldest Desmostylians found being discovered in Ashuro, Japan, in rocks dated to the late Oligocene. Despite this, it did share similarities with other members of the group, namely several for an aquatic way of life. This is seen in their ribs, that are particularly broad and resemble those found in dugongs and manatees. This suggested that Asharoa was adapted to live in shallow marine environments, similar to these animals, hovering slowly at a preferred depth or walking on the bottom. Unlike these animals, however, Asharoa may have still been tied to the land and would come aground to give birth, where it would have met many of the other strange inhabitants of the Oligocene. But some animals likely never saw most of the other inhabitants of the world, as they had been isolated from it for some time. Such is the case of Australia, where you'll find our next critter, a cow tadetta. Though resembling kangaroos, they are in fact not directly related to them. Instead, they sit within the family Hypsoprimodontia. This group only have one living member, that being the musky rat kangaroo, but a cow tadetta isn't quite like its diminutive relative, outweighing it by 130 pounds. With its large size, this animal would have wandered the tropical forests of northern Australia, feeding mainly on meat. Yeah, that's right, this guy was a carnivore, which was inferred from the presence of a buzzsaw-like premolar that would have been used to slice through flesh. Interestingly, this diet may not have been ancestral to this group, as, like other carnivorous marsupials such as Phylaca leo, a cow tadetta possesses broad, flat teeth in the back of its skull that are adapted for processing plant material. Over time, these herbivorous teeth would be used less as they transition to carnivory. This change in tooth usage is also 
illustrated in the animal's incisors, which evolved to resemble dagger-like blades. Its teeth aren't just unique for their carnivorous purpose though, as they undergo one of the stranger changes seen in mammals. Like most mammals, marsupials possess baby teeth that are later replaced by adult ones, but marsupials tend to only replace one, the third premolar. Interestingly, kangaroos take this a step further, as the new premolar doesn't just replace the third, but also the second premolar. However, a cow tadetta takes the cake for weirdness. You see, in juveniles, this second premolar is used as the main cutting surface, but instead of their second premolar being discarded in adulthood, it is instead reorientated and used as a support for the larger buzzsaw-like third premolar. This is very unique amongst mammals, as it means this organ occupies two very unique roles throughout the animal's life, making this animal truly bizarre. But the Oligocene isn't the only period known for weird animals, so if you want to learn about some more, click the playlist on screen, or if you want a part 2 or to see me cover other time periods, then let me know below. Until next time, bye bye However, microware on the anan... Ananimal? Ananimal.